Week 7 fantasy football running back tier list. This is where we break down all of the latest running back news, running back injuries, running back usage, culminating in my top 36 overall running back rankings for week 7. We've hit Bipocalypse, it's getting pretty disgusting, especially once we get down to the low end RB2s and the flex plays, but I'm not going to bury the lead here. Let's get right into it. All right, so as I teased in the intro, the fantasy football running back landscape has taken a pretty big hit, I would say, from both an injury standpoint and a bye week standpoint, because you will be without Joe Mixon, Tony Pollard, Brees Hall, Chuba Hubbard, and Miles Sanders, Damian Pierce, and Devin Singletary, Derrick Henry, and Tajay Spears. So a big time hit to the running back landscape this week, in addition to some of the injuries I'll touch on in a second. So we are going to be getting real grimy, real disgusting with some of these running back plays as we get deeper and deeper. But let's kick things off with the will they play tier. So this is basically where I recap all of the past week's injuries, who's out, who's going to IR, who could potentially play this week. We're going to kick things off with David Montgomery, who is officially out for this game with the rib injury he suffered against the Buccaneers last week. He's likely out next week as well because the Lions do have a week nine bye. And they mentioned that David Montgomery will probably miss multiple weeks with the injury that he sustained. So he should be back in week 10 after a couple weeks off. But I would say for the time being, Jameer Gibbs and Craig Reynolds see a big time upgrade. Kyron Williams is also expected to miss multiple weeks with a sprained ankle that he suffered last week. His backup, Ronnie Rivers, was sent to IR with a knee injury. So that thrusts in sixth round rookie Zach Evans out of Ole Miss to potentially be the starting running back this week. They did elevate Royce Freeman from the practice squad. They brought back Daryl Henderson, who was a street free agent for a while, but played for the Rams for a number of years. Um, Kyron Williams has not been officially placed on IR, so he's not expected to miss like, you know, four games at minimum, but it is probably going to be week to week and he is expected to miss multiple games. So keep that in mind. If you have Kyron Williams, you're probably going to have to make other plans. Roshan Johnson also ruled out this week with a concussion. He has still not cleared the protocol from the Thursday night game against the uh, Washington Commanders a couple games ago. So he is expected to be out as is Khalil Herbert because he is on IR with the knee injury that he's suffered so it looks like it will be the Deontay Foreman and Darrington Evans show yet again I'll touch on that once we get into the actual tier list itself the major question mark I would say is Christian McCaffrey because number one he's the best running back in fantasy and number two he plays on Monday Night Football so there's a lot of you know moving parts going on right now he has not practiced on Thursday he has not practiced on Friday he will have or the 49ers will have a practice today on Saturday as I'm recording this as Christian McCaffrey recovers from the oblique injury that he suffered. In my opinion, I think the 49ers need to be thinking long-term as they're a Super Bowl contender. They're probably the best team in the NFC right now. So just let your backups pummel the Minnesota Vikings who are going to have a top 10 pick, top five potentially pick in the NFL draft this year. So let Jordan Mason, let Elijah Mitchell carry the load. Give Christian McCaffrey a week off. That's what I think they will do given what we know about the injury from my, uh, what I've heard from Fantasy Docs and the lack of practice that we've seen from Christian McCaffrey so far. I will post any updates to the Christian McCaffrey situation in the pinned comment down below in case you guys are curious but if you have Christian McCaffrey I would personally plan to be without him on Monday Night Football but of course we will update that on Sunday morning if we hear anything uh there so make sure you're tuned into our Sunday morning live stream and then a couple other questionable guys just to keep an eye on Kareem Hunt Aaron Jones and Craig Reynolds they're all listed questionable but I expect all three to play uh, all of them have logged at least two limited practices in a row um so those guys should be good to go so uh, let's get right into the tier list now. The locked-in running back starts, the running backs 1-12 to 12 that I'm sure you guys have into your lineup. We have a, a couple new additions to this tier because we are missing a good number of the, you know, Tony Pollard, Brees Hall, Joe Mixon types that might potentially find their way into this tier on buy. Um, but looking at the top 12 running backs, some of the guys that have great matchups, we have Josh Jacobs, Kenneth Walker, DeAndre Swift, and Raheem Mostert in that same game on Sunday Night Football. Then a couple running backs that are potentially going to be in high-scoring games, Austin Eckler and Isaiah Pacheco in that Chiefs Chargers game and then also Christian McCaffrey if he does end up playing on Monday night should be in a potentially high scoring game Raheem Mostert and DeAndre Swift like I mentioned also a high scoring game in addition to it being a good matchup and then Aaron Jones potentially going to be in a high scoring game there as well 
and then some of the elite running backs in this top 12 tier that have bad matchups, so maybe you want to temper expectations for them this week. Saquon Barkley, Bijan Robinson, and I, I Travis Etienne and Alvin Kamara technically did have bad matchups, but they both actually performed at a very high level on Thursday Night Football, so kudos to you guys if you have them in your starting lineup right now because they obviously came through for you. Uh, I do usually like to highlight a guy or two in this tier because I want to go over some recent usage trends. The first guy I want to talk about here is my RB4 in my rankings, which is Kenneth Walker of the Seattle Seahawks. He has been very consistent this year. He has been one of the most consistent running backs in fantasy, running back eight in points per game. I wanted to highlight an uptick in his usage because he actually did see a big time uptick. Traditionally, he's thought of as only an early down guy. When he was coming out of Michigan State, nobody thought he could do anything as a pass catcher. But the week before the bye week in week four and the week after the bye week this past week in week six, we've seen him take on a lot more of the routes as well as more of the long down and distance and more of the two minute drill work. It looks like Zach Charbonnet will not be eating into his workload anytime soon. So definitely keep that in mind. If you guys have Charbonnet, he's purely a handcuff. And if you have Walker, I mean, he's a low to mid-end RB1 rest of season and a guy that is in your lineup each and every week. Running back eight in my rankings that I wanted to highlight is Saquon Barkley. Just a quick update because he was coming off of a multi-week injury last week. There was no ramp-up period. He came right back in to his usual workload. Brutal matchup this week against the Washington Commanders, but this game should be close. It's a divisional matchup, so I would expect a lot of work coming for Saquon Barkley. And then finally, closing out this elite running backs tier, I do have Jonathan Taylor highlighted here as running back 12. JT is still in the midst of a ramp up because, you know, he was coming off of the pup list for the first four games of the season. I was a tad off base with my prediction last week. I thought he would be right back up to 60, 70% of the work. But this week, I think we will probably see that happen. And I think he's going to outsnap Zach Moss comfortably and outperform Zach Moss comfortably. It's a really tough matchup against the Cleveland Browns, probably one of the best run defenses, overall defenses in the league, but they have been a little bit more exploitable against the run than they have against the pass. So keep that in mind. Maybe the Colts go into the game plan, trying to get Jonathan Taylor, the football. So um, that is the end of the top running backs, the top 12 running backs tier. Now let's get into the high end RB twos. So these are guys that the majority of the time are starters for you guys running back 13 for me. And I, I told you it's getting gross already. Already my running back 13 is James Cook this week. Every resident James Cook manager is panicking right now. And I definitely understand why. But in my opinion, he's still a mid-end RB2 most weeks. And the only reason he's a borderline RB1 for me in these rankings this week is because of all the bye weeks and all of the injuries. The Bills are implied for over 25 points. And if they get up early over the New England Patriots, it could be a good game script for the run. They played pretty bad against the Giants last week, but I think they will bounce back against the Patriots this week. And they have been below average against fantasy running backs, the New England Patriots defense. So I do think we're going to get a James Cook bounce back game here. Latavius Murray's also in play as I'll talk about later, but for the most part, I still think this is the James Cook show. Running back 14 for me in my rankings is Brian Robinson Jr. You see, I have highlighted the game script dependent nature of the usage of this backfield. So when the commanders are in a close game or they're winning, it's the Brian Robinson show. When they're in a blowout or they're playing from behind, it's the Antonio Gibson show. I don't expect Brian Robinson to get phased out this week because they are actually Vegas favorites against the New York Giants. So it should be a get right spot for Brian Robinson. I think he's a half decent buy low right now. And this is the 22nd ranked defense in adjusted fantasy points allowed to the running back position. So Brian Robinson, I nearly made him my start of the week. I went for somebody a little bit more bold, but he was nearly my start of the week as well. I do think he's going to get on track this week. Running back 15 for me is Jameer Gibbs. 17 carries and one target was the workload that he had back in week three when David Montgomery was last out of the lineup. And now that, you know, Jameer Gibbs has had a couple weeks to recover, he's less of a rookie. Dan Campbell has basically come out and said that Jameer Gibbs will be thrust into a big role this week because without Jameer Gibbs and without David Montgomery, Montgomery. They pretty much have nothing else uh, in the run game. And we know that's kind of the identity of this football team on offense. So I might move Gibbs down a little bit if we hear anything about like a pitch count or anything like that. But as of now, it sounds like he's going to be a full go. He was, you know, not really carrying an inju uh, injury designation heading into the week. And it looks like he's going to get this same like 60% snap share workload that we saw from him back in week three when David Montgomery was last out. So keep that in mind with Jameer Gibbs. He is probably going to be in your starting lineup this week. My running back 16 is Javante Williams, who is 
is my start of the week this week. This could be the Javante Williams week, in my opinion. We have not seen him thrust into his full workload at all this year because, you know, coming into the season, he was being ramped up from the ACL tear. Then we saw him suffer a hip injury, so that obviously put a damper on his ramp-up period from his ACL tear. But this past week, when he came back from the hip injury after missing one game, he posted the best PFF rushing grade that we've seen from him since week 15 of his rookie season. And he visibly looked a lot better last Thursday night against the Kansas City Chiefs. He gets a Packers run defense this week that ranks 28th in adjusted fantasy points allowed to the running back position. So I do think that this could be the coming out party for Javante Williams. This could be the week where we see him get 50, 60, 70% of the opportunities in this backfield. And we see him actually take advantage of of the full workload. We knew it was going to take a couple weeks with Javante Williams coming off of a multi-ligament ACL tear. This week, I think, could be the week that he actually breaks out. So make sure if you guys, um, you know, your resident Javante Williams manager is really panicking, send out some offers, see what you can get him for, because I do think he has an opportunity to be an RB2 rest of the season, maybe even a low-end RB1 rest of the season, if he can get back on track. If he doesn't get back on track in this game, I'm going to be a little bit worried, but it's a risk that I'm willing to take on the open market for the price tag that you're actually paying for Javante. Williams at this current point in time. So running back 17 for me on the week is Rashad White of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He is still getting an elite workload. He's just not producing any efficient runs. And it's so frustrating to watch as a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan because... I mean, we've played a lot of the best run defenses in the league so far, and this week is no different. I mean, we played the Lions last week, who are the best in the league at stopping the run. Played the Eagles a couple weeks ago. We played the Falcons this week, who are a top six defense against fantasy running backs. The interior offensive line for Tampa Bay just gets blown back on every single run that they try and do inside. They need to get him more out in space, and White honestly just has nowhere to go, so I can't even blame the guy too much for getting tackled in the backfield every single time he runs the ball. Um, I just want to see them use him a little bit more creatively, and that's not really what's happening right now. But as it currently stands, given the bye weeks, given the injuries, he has to still be a top 20 play because he's getting the workload. And if he can punch in a touchdown, if he can catch some passes here and there, he's going to be a, a, you know, a low floor option, probably not a super high ceiling this week. But I do think that the Falcons-Buccaneers game could actually be a sneaky high scoring game there. So uh, closing out this tier, we have Ramondre Stevenson, who is my RB18 on the week. Of course, the week I trade away Ramondre Stevenson is the week he decided to show some signs of life last week but definitely some big news for his workload. I still think he is a sell high right now because I'm not really on the side of holding a guy who's on what I consider to be like a bottom five offense with the New England Patriots. And Ramondre himself, even though he looked a little better last week, he's still not really making anybody miss. He's not making a lot happen on his own. And even though the workload was there and the targets were there, the Patriots are 24th in pass blocking. They're 24th in run blocking. They're not a very good offense. And Mac Jones and the whole quarterback situation is a complete question mark right now. So for me with Ramondre Stevenson, use that big week that he had as a bounce back performance. Maybe people you know who had him last Last year will remember how good he was and you can sell him off the back of that because I really don't want to hold this guy rest of the season use the big performance try and tear up to a better option going forward maybe you have to go after a guy that's on buy for a team that's needing uh, wins this week that would definitely make some sense as well so moving on to the low end RB2s and it's going to get disgusting really fast because after Ramondre Stevenson who by no means is like very sexy of an option. We're getting into guys that we don't even really know what their workload is. Like that's how bad the running back landscape is this week. Low end RB twos. The guy that kicks off my low end RB twos is running back 19 for me. Deontay Foreman of the Chicago bears. No Khalil Herbert. He's on IR. No Roshan Johnson. He's out with a concussion. He's still in the protocol. Deontay Foreman was the leader of the backfield this past week. He ran 60% of the snaps. He got a majority of the carries. He was running a little bit of routes and he got actually a decent amount of long down and distance and two minute drill snaps as well. It's Tyson Bajant leading this offense, which is terrible news for everybody involved, but the Raiders proved to be a get right spot for Ramondre Stevenson last week. And I think it could be a get right spot for Deontay Foreman this pa- uh, this next week as well. So he should be a solid option. I'm not excited about starting him, but I do think you could do a lot worse than a guy that's going to get six. 60-70% of his overall backfield opportunities. So running back 20 for me on the week is Jerome Ford of the Cleveland Browns. This backfield is kind of a mess right now because Kareem Hunt kind of worked back in to the backfield more as a pass catching back. Um, Jerome Ford is still the starter in my opinion and with all the bye weeks this is kind of the low end RB2 steer you're getting a guy who's a, basically an RB3 that's going to be a low end RB2 uh, pushed up the totem pole this week I can't believe a 55% snap share running back on a PJ Walker led offense is my RB20 on the week but this is where we're at at this point in the in the NFL season so Jerome Ford not an exciting option but definitely somebody that should get some volume 
Now let's get into some some of the guys that are a little bit more risky. My running back 21 on the week right now is Elijah Mitchell. Uh, as I already talked about in the will they play tier, I don't think Christian McCaffrey is going to end up playing in this game. He's not practiced Thursday or Friday because they play on Monday night. We'll have one more practice on Saturday, and I really don't have the information at hand right now to make the call if Christian McCaffrey is going to play. But as of right now, I believe that Elijah Mitchell is the leader in the clubhouse for any of the rushing opportunity that Christian McCaffrey would vacate if he's out on Monday night. Mitchell was coming off of a multi-week injury last week. He's always been the CMC handcuff, and Kyle Shanahan basically said that he's earned a ton with us over the uh, the last couple of years. He said, I think Elijah Mitchell, when he's healthy, is as good of a back as there is. He's just had a hard time staying healthy. He said, hopefully Christian will be good to go this week. These comments from like Tuesday or Wednesday, so um, not the most updated in terms of like Christian McCaffrey's status. He added, but if he's not ready to go, Christian McCaffrey, we've got a group of backs that we can rely on. So what it tells me is that it's going to be a hot hand approach, and I I think Elijah Mitchell will get the first crack at it. So for me, he's the guy that I would choose to start if, let's say, I had Christian McCaffrey and I was holding Elijah Mitchell in case he's out, or if you just need a better option to play on Monday night. I hope we know this by Sunday, um, whether or not Christian McCaffrey is going to play, but we might not. It's possible that we go all the way to Monday without knowing if Christian McCaffrey is going to play, and that's going to cause a lot of people to have to make some tough decisions in their fantasy football lineup. So Running back 22 for me on the week is Alexander Madison. It is not a great matchup for him, right? He's playing against the San Francisco 49ers on Monday night as well. His usage was a lot better against the Chicago Bears, though, and that is definitely something to take away from Alexander Madison. Again, like Ramondre Stevenson, I'm probably looking to sell high on him after the performance that he just had, even though it wasn't very good from a fantasy perspective. Some people might buy into the usage and think that he's going to bo- uh, bounce back in this game, but I think that the, the opposite is going to happen. I think this game could get out of hand. I think the 49ers are going to beat the Vikings pretty handedly, um, but I still think that Alexander Madison is a solid play nonetheless. As gross as it sounds, he's still a top 24 running back for me. Running back 23 on the week for me is Zach Evans. So this is the first time we're talking about the Rams backfield without Kyron Williams. I could see any number of things happening in this backfield because there is no such thing as having certainty about what's going to happen here because Zach Evans was a day three pick. He was a sixth round pick. He might get the full workload because Sean McVay kind of has proven already that whoever the starting running back is gets the full workload. But I also wouldn't be shocked because Zach Evans is a young player if Sean McVay doesn't totally trust him on all situations, especially from what I saw from Zach Evans at Old Miss, I don't think he's very good on third down. I don't think he can pass protect very well. So what I'm expecting is Zach Evans to get the early down work, Royce Freeman to split work on third down, and maybe even a bit of Daryl Henderson mixed in. So I'm not excited to start Zach Evans this week, but I think given that we have all these bye weeks, given that we have all these injuries, he's still a top 24 guy for me. My best guess, like I said, is that Evans is the early down leader. Royce is the third down guy. Maybe Daryl Henderson mixes in. So not a great situation. Maybe Evans will get the full workload. I just don't think that's likely to happen because I don't think Sean McVay loves trusting a rookie running back who was honestly a raw prospect and a young prospect to begin with. So uh, running back 24 for me, closing out this tier is Jalen Warren. Brutal matchup for the run against the the Los Angeles Rams, but Jalen Warren has outscored Najee Harris in every single week this season. So I'm going to just completely start ranking him over Najee Harris, even despite the 45% of the snaps that he's earning. He's getting targets. He's being used in two-minute drill, long down and distance situations. The Pittsburgh Steelers offense might see a bit of an uptick this week because Deontay Johnson is back from IR. So that is definitely good news for the offense, but we'll have to kind of see how that plays out. So Jalen Warren is definitely in play this week. Now let's get into the flex plays. And this is, I'm just going to rapid fire these because it gets really, really ugly, really, really fast. Running back 25 for me on the week is Zach Moss. He's been great this year, but Jonathan Taylor, like I said, should get back to his full workload. Nonetheless, I still think Zach Moss is a solid flex play given how good he's performed. And if you guys are desperate, I think the decision point is probably that I would go with a wide receiver over Zach Moss, but I do think he's in play for you. And I honestly could argue him a little bit higher than this just given how good he's been so far. Uh, Running back 26 for me here is Justice Hill. The Ravens backfield has a brutal matchup against the Lions, who are bar none the best running back defense in the NFL against fantasy running backs right now. So not a good matchup for either Justice Hill or Gus Edwards. The backfield also took a turn with Gus Edwards carrying the bulk of the work this past week. But the way I look at that backfield situation is if they're leading by a lot, they're probably going to rely on Gus Edwards if the game is close or if they're playing from behind, they're going to rely on Justice Hill. And against the Lions this week, they're a good team. They're five and one football team. I'd imagine the game will at least be close, if not the Ravens playing from behind. So I do think that this is the week that we get Justice Hill um, having a pretty solid performance. Running back 27 for me on the week is Jordan Mason. 
As I mentioned with Elijah Mitchell, I believe he will get the first crack at the job should Christian McCaffrey miss on Monday night. But knowing that the 49ers will likely deploy a committee type of approach and ride the hot hand, I still do think Jordan Mason is in the is in the range of outcomes as a lead back for this team because he's actually been much better than Elijah Mitchell on a per-touch basis over the last year and a half. So if you have Elijah Mitchell, if you have Jordan Mason, I do think they are actually playable, assuming we know Christian McCaffrey is going to be out on Monday night. So uh, running back 28 for me is Jeff Wilson, who has logged three straight full practices this week. It looks like he is going to make his season debut for the Dolphins. Make sure he is rostered in your league because I would not be shocked if Jeff Wilson is the number one waiver ad coming uh, on Monday on at the beginning of week eight. Get ahead of the curve. Go get Jeff Wilson now. Even though Raheem Mostert's been excellent and he's been the lead back there, it would not shock me at all if Jeff Wilson takes away some of the goal line work or takes away some of the early down work. So make sure Jeff Wilson is rostered in your league. We know how good this Miami Dolphins offense has been for fantasy running backs. They can support both guys. And honestly, I can make the argument Jeff Wilson belongs to be higher on this list as well. So Running back 29 for me here is Antonio Gibson. The Giants are exploitable in all facets, especially if the commanders are able to put up points in this game, which they probably should be able to. Antonio Gibson, he may be able to catch a few passes in this game, carry the ball a few times, and maybe find the end zone. So again, I think you could do worse if you're desperate, but I probably wouldn't be playing him over like many wide receivers. Like if you had a flex decision with Antonio Gibson and like 45 other receivers, 50 other receivers, I would probably go with whatever receiver you are looking to potentially start there. Running back 30 for me on the week is Craig Reynolds. We've heard that Gibbs will get most of the work. Like I said, he isn't carrying an injury designation going into the game. So I don't think Craig Reynolds is probably a very good start because I think Gibbs will get most of the work. But it is possible that Craig Reynolds gets some of the early down work, maybe finds the end zone in the red zone. They don't typically like using Jameer Gibbs from that perspective. So I don't think it's the worst play in the world to go with Craig Reynolds as RB30 here. And then finally, if you guys are completely screwed, if you're totally desperate, Najee Harris, Kareem Hunt, Latavius Murray, Tyler Algier, Gus Edwards, and Kenneth Gainwell close out my top 36. Again, all those guys kind of bring something different to the table. All of them are in split backfield. Some of them are in good offenses. Some of them are in not so good offenses. So keep that in mind. I think my favorite plays of that group are Latavius Murray, Tyler Algier, and Kenneth Gainwell there. If you guys are looking for some upside, I think those guys definitely make a lot of sense. Um, but with that being said, if you guys did enjoy this video, if I helped you set your lineup, your running back position, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new around here, and leave as many comments as you want down below. I will try and answer as many as I possibly can. Make sure you have the notification bell turned on anytime we post a video. We typically answer comments early on when the video has been posted. So if you want to make sure your comments gets, uh, get answered, turn on the notification bell to be notified anytime we post a video. And also, if you guys want to access to our rest of season rankings, our weekly rankings, our uh, dynasty rankings, all of the bonus content that we're putting out week in and week out. Make sure to check out flockfantasy.com. Use promo code FSE when you sign up for 30% off any of the packages. When you sign up annually, you'll get six months for free, as well as a free Zoom consultation with myself or with Danny. So if that interests you, link down below in the pinned comment. Make sure to check out our other sponsors, Underdog Fantasy. Use the promo code FSE over there for 100% back up to $500 for a limited time. Time. So make sure if you guys want to get some action on Sunday's games, you head on over to Underdog Fantasy and use that promo code FSE. So with that being said, peace out, and we'll talk to you soon.